Today, I was going to make a video on the new BAR machine gun that DICE released on Thursday, and I was going to tell you that it had been somewhat ruined by the current 5.2 weapon balance and TTK settings, but thankfully, I don't have to do that now because I'll wait until tomorrow to make that video on the new TTK settings because DICE has just announced that their hotfix to scale back the weapon balance and the TTK close to what it was like with the launch of the Pacific, that hotfix is coming tomorrow. No point making a video about a weapon that is just about to change. So instead, you can enjoy this update 5.2 BAR gameplay in the background whilst I tell you all about this hotfix and what it's going to include. The hotfix, which is named update 5.2.2, that's going to be going live tomorrow morning, Monday the 16th of December, and it's very likely to be the last update that Battlefield 5 gets before the holiday period. We're all going to go off and stuff ourselves with turkey and roast potatoes after that. It will be going out for all three platforms, PC, Xbox One and PS4, and it will mean by the middle of the day that DICE will have scaled back the weapon balance and the TTK somewhat, and they'll also have turned off a lot of the 3D spotting icons that they introduced last week. We're going to start off with the weapon balance. Let me list off everything changing with this hotfix. The slow firing SMGs are first on the list, the ZK383, the EMP, the MP40 and the Sten. They're all having their damage model improved from 4 to 11 bullets to kill to 4 to 10 bullets to kill. The Light Bolt ZK383, the MP28 and the Suomi, they are the faster firing SMGs. They're having their damage model improved as well from the previous 5 to 13 bullets to kill to 4 to 10 bullets to kill with faster damage drop off than the slower firing SMGs. That's to differentiate them. These faster firing SMGs, they're also going to have some recoil changes, a 25% increase in vertical recoil and a 60% increase in horizontal recoil. Now, the Tommy gun, you'll notice that I didn't include that in the list of fast firing SMGs. Unfortunately, I, I'm not making this up. Due to an error with the damage tables, the Tommy gun is going to remain a 4 to 11 bullet to kill gun in this hotfix, not the intended 4 to 10 bullets to kill. This is going to be rectified in the next update, coming soon in early 2020. Very likely going to be the January update, but unfortunately the Tommy gun is not going to quite work the same as it should do, but it's still going to be slightly better than what it was before update 5.2. I know, a little bit confusing. And then the Type 100, that sits separate. This will move from a 12 bullet to kill maximum to a 10 bullet to kill maximum. It's still a 5 bullet to kill minimum at close range due to its high rate of fire. Next on the list, we have assault class weapons, and we will start with the fully automatic assault rifles. The STG, that's getting its 4 bullet to kill minimum back at close range. It's moving from a 5 to 8 bullet to kill model to a 4 to 8 bullet to kill model. Although I do have to say the STG is one of the few weapons in update 5.2 that remains really, really good despite the changes. But it is now getting its 4 bullet to kill minimum back, which I think is a good thing. The Sturmgewehr 1.5, that's moving back to a 5 to 9 bullet to kill model, and recoil changes are being made to this weapon as well. Vertical recoil is down 25%, and horizontal recoil is down 20%. The M1907SF, that's the assault rifle that DICE tried to balance as an SMG, that's being somewhat reverted back to a standard assault rifle-like role, but it is going to have greater damage drop-off in comparison to other assault rifles in the class, and that's purely because of its high rate of fire. Previously, it was a 5 to 13 bullet to kill model. That's being replaced with a 4 to 10 bullet to kill model. And then the Breda PG is having its damage model improved from 5 to 6 to 4 to 6 bullets to kill, bringing back that 4-round burst kill opportunity. That was really one of the oddities in Update 5.2, and I just think that DICE weren't quite looking at that weapon properly when they decided to try and rebalance it. Some common sense has prevailed, and the four-round burst opportunity is back for the Breda. Then, moving on to the semi-auto rifle, so we're staying in the assault class here, but we're talking about semi-autos instead, we have a few tweaks happening with this hotfix. The Turner SMLE and the Mass 44, they're having their close range damage increased. They'll now do three bullets to kill minimum out to 30 meters. DICE states this was an incorrect max damage issue 
being corrected with the hotfix. And then the AGM-42, its rate of fire is being increased from 300 to 360 rounds per minute. And this is to better offset the weapon from the Turner SMLE and the Mass-44. They all sort of separated now and they're much better balanced than what they were before. And then lastly on the list, the support weapons. The K7, the Bren and the Lewis gun, they're having their damage models improved. They will now work to a 4 to 8 bullet to kill model. The LS26 and the FG42, two of the support class weapons that were balanced to play like SMGs, and the FG42 being one of the hardest hit weapons with update 5.2, they are both being greatly improved from their current position. They're being moved to a 4 to 9 bullet to kill model, and the FG42 is going to have a slightly faster drop off to balance it against that slower firing LS26. Both of these weapons should now feel a lot more like the machine guns that they're supposed to be, instead of being SMGs. And then the VGO and the MG42, two of the fast firing MMGs, they're having that ridiculous 13 bullet to kill maximum reined back in a little bit. Both of these guns are moving to a 4 to 10 bullet to kill model, with reductions being made to their damage drop off in the process. Vertical recoil is being reduced by 25% and horizontal by 20%. And then one addition for the MG42, that high velocity bullets bug that I highlighted in a video earlier this week, that's being fixed as well. So when using that specialization, the MG42 will use the correct damage model. The hotfix is also going to change some of the 3D spotting icons as well. After this hotfix, icons that previously appeared when you looked near an enemy within a certain range, those will have been removed. DICE is removing these completely and they're chalking them up as just a bad idea. The icons that appear when you look nearly directly at an enemy within a certain range, however, those icons are remaining, but they're coming with some changes. The activation range of those icons is being reduced from 25 to 20 meters. The angle of activation is being reduced down to just 3 degrees and improvements have been made to the activation of the icons around cover as well. The unintended appearance of icons through walls, through smoke and other forms of cover will have been partially fixed by DICE but they're stopping short of 100% confirming that they fixed this issue completely and I kind of understand that, especially if they're not 100% sure and they're pushing out a hotfix relatively quickly after the release of update 5.2. I can understand if they're saying that this might not 100% be fixed, but it will have definitely been improved. And then lastly, for players who are looking for information about the cannot fetch report stuff and you not getting your unlocks or any of the company coin that you should be earning after games, this was listed by Freeman on Twitter. He said he'll be able to confirm tomorrow morning whether that is getting fixed or not. Those issues are subject to a server-side fix, not a client-side fix. And this hotfix is a client-side fix, so he needs to understand how much success the team have had with their testing of those server-side changes over the weekend. So it sounds like that this could be a last-minute thing, whether it's fixed or not. If it is fixed, then that's great. If it's not, then... That's still kind of frustrating. Beyond this hotfix, I really do hope that DICE is able to see the mistakes that they've made with update 5.2. This hotfix now stands as evidence that some of the core features of update 5.2 were outright mistakes because their effects are being removed or they're being scaled back in some way. Update 5.2 wasn't an update that the current community really appreciated when it came to weapon changes and enemy icons. They were completely changing the core gameplay of Battlefield 5. The changes themselves, they felt somewhat rushed. I think they were poorly implemented and they made the game worse instead of making the game better. But what's more alarming is that the changes were made with the motive of improving the game for new players. And in my opinion, they did the exact opposite with the added bonus of annoying the active community that the game has. By focusing on the opportunity to please people who don't currently play Battlefield 5, DICE failed their core community. The core community that supported them through one of the worst periods of this franchise's history. I think they failed their loyal fans here. 
The changes, they feel reminiscent of the ones made during Battlefield 4's CTE days. That was an experimental update made to be tested by some dedicated players in the community test environment. But here in Battlefield 5, these changes didn't have that usual work in progress, CTE, not final tag applied to them because DICE deployed them straight into the live environment of Battlefield 5. The live environment where all of their current players play. Just because we're now playing games in an age where patching them is much more frequent than it used to be, I don't think that should be used as an excuse to deploy more risky and controversial patches. Just because you know you can quickly revert them with another patch or another hotfix. The standard for patches should still be as high as possible and decisions being taken should not be taken lightly just because a hotfix can be put out to rectify any issues that might come up. As it stands at the moment, we are in one of those positions with Battlefield 5. We've had a patch go out, things didn't work, and we've had to have those things reverted very quickly afterwards. I don't really think that's a scenario that players really want from their video games. They want consistency, and they want a game to work the way that it should work, and the way that it was advertised. This change came too late in the game's life cycle. We are going back close to where we were, but we're still not quite all the way there. This hotfix is going out tomorrow, 16th of December, and as I said, it's not a full revert, but over the holidays, I'm going to take this update as it is, and I'm going to try and enjoy Battlefield 5 more than I did when update 5.2 came out. I'm still somebody that says I think we should go for a full revert all the way back to those old settings and then work forward slowly from there, rather than having a massive change like the one we had with update 5.2, but that's where I'm really hoping DICE learns. I hope that they start making more conscious decisions about where they want to go with Battlefield 5, rather than diving in with something massively drastic and then having to backtrack yet again. But there we go, I'm about done here. I'm not gonna say much more. I'll be back tomorrow with another video either on the BAR light machine gun or on the new TTK balance to give my opinions and whether I really think DICE needs to go back further and just fully revert the TTK. But until then, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.